Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson. Um, sorry, what happened? Sorry about the failure to give you a lesson last time. Um, luckily for us, the system is. Sorry, I just realized my mic was off. I don't know how long the mic's been off. So let me start again by saying that we are going to be looking at finance and we're going to be looking at interest that is a little bit more interesting than just the compounded annually like we've been doing. So if it's compounded monthly, what you need to do is you need to take that I of 0.1371 and divide it by 12. And the reason you divide it by 12 is because there are 12 months. So you're taking the interest rate and you're dividing by 12, but you're taking the number of payments or investment periods that you will receive invest, uh, interest on, depending on whether you're investing or paying, um, and you multiply it by 12. So now the interest rate is going to look like, like this. It's going to be 0.137 divided by 12, but your N, your number of payments, is going to be 2 times 12. Okay, so that is compounded monthly. If we compound it quarterly, quarterly means four times a year. Okay, just like a quarter is a quarter over here, but quarterly is four times. So then you take your interest at 13.7 and you divide by four, but then you take your payments and you multiply them by four. Okay, to get the feeling of what's happening. Let's say we had to compound it daily and we're going to assume that there are 365 days in a year. I know that scientifically there are 365 and a quarter days, but obviously we don't live a quarter days and we're assuming it's a non-leap year. So therefore, if it's compounded daily, it's going to be 0 0.137 divided by 365. But then obviously your N, which is the number of years, is going to be multiplied by 365, which gives you 730. And semi-annually means twice a year. So therefore, that's going to be 0 0.137 divided by 2, and then N equals 2 times 2, which is 4. So these are the phrases you need to learn when you're getting to slightly more complicated compound um, interest problems. Okay, so let's look at an example. Always it's easiest if we look at an example. So our formula, which is on your formula sheet, is equal to A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. If it's compound interest, we've seen the word compounded there, so we're happy. Now it says, 50,000 Rand is invested in the bond market for seven years. Calculate the amount of money that can be withdrawn if the interest rate is 10.5% per annum compounded quarterly. Okay, so always we write down our variables. Okay, and at the moment, like I said, you guys are pretty lucky because you're only looking at two types of formula so far, simple interest and compound interest. Um, there's no future and present values for you guys yet. Okay, so A is the amount that can be withdrawn, so that's what we want. Principal, the P, is the amount that was invested, so that's 50,000. I is the interest rate. Now the interest rate, first of all, we have to divide it by 100 to get it to decimal. So that's going to be 10.5 divided by 100, which is 0 0.105. But now it's compounded quarterly, which means what? Which means it's going to be, um, the interest rate is going to be charged four times a year. So we divide that by four. Now the number of payments, there are seven years 
but because it's compounded quarterly, we're going to multiply that by four. So we end up with 28 payments. So if you want to think about it, you can think about this as payment periods or investment periods. We've got 28 investment periods every quarter. So for each year, um, the interest is basically divided by four for each of the quarters of each year. Okay, so we're going to go A is equal to 50,000, one plus 0, 0,105 over four, but all to the power of 28. Okay, so now we need to get out our calculator and we need to switch it on and we go 50, one, two, I okay, guess 50,000 already multiplied by one plus plus a fraction naught point one zero five all over four applied to the power of twenty eight and then we say equals and that's 103,290 and 12 cents. 103,290 and 12 cents. So that's 103,290 and 12 cents. That is not a bad return of investment for seven years. You're getting out double what you invested in the first place, a little bit more than double. Okay, so now do you start getting an idea of how we use this compounded quarterly? Let's look at simple depreciation and then we'll talk about compound depreciation. So simple depreciation is also known as straight line depreciation. So effectively it is the inverse of simple interest. So depreciation occurs when an asset loses value, okay? over a period of time. So you use the simple interest formula, A is equal to P, one minus IN. So it's exactly the same as a normal central, a simple interest formula, but the simple interest formula, the simple interest formula is A is equal to P, one plus IN. The depreciation one is one minus IN because obviously it's a losing value. So A is the amount that you're going to be able to sell the asset for at the end, okay, or that you'll get out. P is the principal, which is the amount of money you would have paid for the asset. I is the interest in decimal form, and N is your number of years, the number of years. Okay, so let's look at an example. And now remember that again, we are talking about simple interest and simple depreciation. So for that reason, we don't have to worry about these funny ends and everything, and it's just gonna be per annum, okay? So we've got the formulas, A is equal to P, one minus I N. Okay, a car is valued at 185,000, okay? It depreciates at 12% per annum using straight line depreciation, which is simple, simple depreciation. Calculate the value of the car after seven years. Okay, so again, A, P, I, and N. A is what we want. We want to know what we would get out for this car. P is your principal, which is the amount of money the car is currently valued at, which is 185,000. Your interest is 12%, okay, per annum. So that is just going to be 0, 0,12. And because it's simple or straight line depreciation, your N is just seven. So we can pop that in our calculator after writing out our equation. We've got 185, one, two, three, multiplied by one minus 0, 0,12, multiplied by seven, close the bracket. Okay, so let's get our calculators out and we can clear it and we can go 185, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 1 minus bracket 0 0.12, multiplied by 7, close bracket for that one, close bracket for that one, equals 29,600. So this car is going to be worth 29,600. So effectively what you could say is that the book value, if this is a depreciation based on it, the book value of the car would be 29,600 rand 
after seven years. So what does that mean? That means that the car that's currently valued at 185,000 Rand will effectively, you'll be able to sell for 29,600. Okay, obviously it's getting a little bit more complicated than that because it depends with cars, especially um, it depends on the type of car because the cars have a different depreciation and the wear and tear and if you've kept it looking nice, okay. Um, but this is an example of what could happen to the value of a car. Let's have a look at another example. A small business buys a photocopier for 9,000 Rand. Okay, the owner needs to know how much you will be able to sell it for after four years. If he knows it will depreciate at 7% per annum on a straight line basis, how much would he be able to sell it for? So basically he wants to sell it after seven year, after four years and then obviously maybe buy a new photocopier with that money or part of that money um or that money will go towards a new photocopier shall i say okay so let's go again a p i and n again we're looking at straight line basis so our formula is a is equal to p one minus i n a is the amount that we'd be able to sell it for, so we don't know, we want to find that out. P is the amount of money that we've invested in this photocopier, so that's 9,000 Rand. The interest is 7%, so it's going to be 0, 0,07 when we change it to decimal. And the number of payments in this case is 4. So therefore, A is equal to 9, 1, 2, 3, 1 minus... 0, 0, 7 times by 4, close bracket. Okay, so let's pop that in our calculators. We've got 9, 1, 2, 3, bracket, 1 minus, bracket, 0, point, mm, too many points, 0, 7 multiplied by 4, close bracket, close the second bracket, equals 6,480, 6,480, that's not bad. So he'd be able to sell this um, photocopier for 6,480 and that would obviously go towards a new photocopier, whatever equipment he needs. Right, now let's talk compound depreciation. So this is exactly the same again as compound interest, except that it's got a negative and it's also known as, and you need to know this phrase, the reducing balance depreciation. So we've got straight line depreciation, which is the simple interest, makes sense, and reducing balance depreciation. Okay, so the formula is, like I said, exactly the same as the compound interest, except it's got a minus instead of a plus. So you guys got to be careful because the formula sheets, as far as I know, only have the compound interest and the simple interest formula. So obviously you need to make sure that when you are doing the depreciation, you use the minuses. And again, A is your amount, P is your principal, I is interest, and N is number of years. And we've spoken about compound. In this case, we're just looking at possibly looking at per annums again um, and then obviously we'll get a little bit more complicated. So the number of oyster catches in the Western Cape is decreasing at a compound rate of 15% per annum. Okay just to let you guys know in case you don't oyster catches are a bird okay and they obviously catch oysters. <laughs> no, they don't only catch oysters but um, they're known as oyster catchers. So the number of oyster catchers in the Western Cape is decreasing by a compound rate of 15% per annum which is quite scary. There are currently 5,600 oyster catchers in the Western Cape. What will the population be in three years? Okay, so we know that we are doing compound depreciation, so our formula is equal to A is equal to P, 1 minus I to the power of N. Okay, we want A, that's what we want, is how many there'll be after five, three years. P is what we started with, which is 5,600. I is the interest rate, and it's going to be in decimal, so we divide by 100, and N is 3. So A is going to be 5,600, 1 minus 0, 0,15 to the power of 3. Um, so let's have a look. So we clear it and we go 5, 6, no, let's clear it again. 5, 6, 0, 0 multiplied by 1 minus 0, 0,15 
point one five bracket all to the power of three equals 3,439.1. Well, obviously you can't have point 0.1 of a bird. So therefore it's going to be 3,439 birds left. So that's 3,439 birds, um, oyster catchers. And that's actually quite scary, which is why they are a protected species. Okay. Right. Now, again, it says a business buys a photocopy for 180,000 Rand. It depreciates at 5% per annum on a reducing balance. So what does that mean? That means compound depreciation. What is the value, value of the photocopy after four years? Okay, so if you're watching this live, I really hope that you guys, well, when you read this, I want you to be a little bit ahead of me. You should have read it, okay? Business buys the photocopy for 180,000, depreciates at 5.7% per annum on a reducing balance. What is the value of the photocopies? So while I'm reading, you also need to be reading, but you need to be studying the problem so that you can be a little bit ahead with me and let, unless you don't know what to do in which case follow obviously but if you think you know what to do get a bit ahead of me otherwise what you can do is watch the video and then go back to the recording of it and then start at the beginning like where I am now and then do the question for yourself you can pause the video do the question for yourself and then see how you did okay so reducing balance means that we are using a is equal to p 1 minus i to the power of n. Okay, we know that because it's a compound and it's reducing balance. Okay, our a is what we want. It says what is the value of the photocopier after four years? P is the amount that we paid for this photocopier, which is 180,000 Rand. That's a lot of money. The depreciation, which is your i, is 5.7% per annum. So we're going to have to go 0, 0, 5, 7 because remember we divide this by 100 to get our interest and our N is just four years. So now we substitute in, we've got 180, 2, 3, 1 minus 0, 0, 0, 5, 7, all to the power of 4. So let's do that. So we're going to go 180, 1, 2, 3, let's check it, 180, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.057, close the brackets, to the power of 4 equals, okay, and that is 142,337 and 48. So that's 142,300 and, I'm blank, 37 and 48 cents. Um, 37 and 48 cents. Okay, so that would be the value of the photocopier after four years. So you can see you've lost almost 10,000 rand a year in the value. It's interesting. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so now we're going to do some mixed examples, which is what I like, because then you need to decide what you need to do on each question, okay? So let's have a look at this. It says, on January, 1st of January 2010, the value of my gets is 120,000. The car's value decreases on a reducing balance basis of 20% per annum. Ouch. What will the value of the car be on the 1st of January 2015? Okay. So let's just make sure that the number of years that we've got. We've got 2010. 2011, uh, sorry about the skew line, 2012, 2013, 2014, and then 2015. So we've got the whole of 2010, the whole of this, and okay, so if this would be the 1st of January, 1 January, 1 January, 1 January, 1 January, and 1 January. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 years. So that's pretty easy that we're looking at a 5-year gap. So then no, we've said that it's a reducing balance. So we know it's A is equal to P, 1 minus I, all to the power of N, because that's the formula. The amount of money we originally paid, or the amount of money that the get, gets us valued at was 120,000. So we know that P is 120,000 
our I is 20%, okay? So remember, and then per annum. So do you agree that that's going to be 0, 0,2? Because all I have to do is divide this by 100. The N we know is five years because I drew it out here. And we want to know what A is. Okay, what will the value of the car be on the 1st of January? So what do we do? We go P, oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. I've already written P. So let's, oh, we raise all Okay, it's fine. A is equal to P, 1 minus I to the power of N. The principal we said was 120,000. 1 minus I, which is 0, comma 2, to the power of N, which we said was 5 years. Okay, so all we need to do now is get out our calculator. So, this is 120, 1, 2, 3, 120,000, multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.2, close bracket, to the power of 5 equals... And that's 39,321 rand and 60 cents. Sure, that's seriously reducing that value. 39,321, 39,321 and 60 cents. That has seriously reducing value in the five years. Right, let's have a look at another question. It says, after four years, the value of a computer is halved. Assuming simple decay, so that's simple depreciation, what is the annual rate of depreciation? Okay, so do you agree that for simple depreciation we're using A is P equal to P1 minus IN? That's the formula, okay? That's a 1, not an I. I don't know why I did that. 1. Okay, now, we've got A, P, I and N. And it says the only thing we've definitely got is that this is 4. But do you see that they've said that the value of the computer is halved? And I showed you a trick for this. We're going to let the, orig the original value be 2x. Then do you agree that the amount out is now x because that's halved? You could have been 2a and a, it doesn't matter what values, variables. But the point is that the the amount out is half the amount that we started with because that was this is x and it's 2x and we want i. So do you agree now our formula reads something like this? It reads, our equation it reads x is equal to 2x 1 minus 4i. Okay, I've just swapped the n and i because it's easier to write. So what can we do? We can divide both sides by x. Okay, if you do it like that, you might just cancel the x's. So let's not do it like that. Let's rather do it like this. Oh, don't do that. Let's do this. Let's divide both sides by x. So you can see what I'm doing. If I do that, x divided by x is 1 is equal to, and x divided by x is, goes away, 2, 1 minus 4i. Okay, so what I could do is times out this bracket. So it becomes 2 minus 8i is equal to 1, right? So do you agree then I can just solve for i? So we're going to take this across. It becomes 1 minus 2 is equal to minus 8i. So minus 1 is equal to minus 8i. So therefore i is equal to 1 divided by 8, which is, if we take our calculators and we go 1 divided by 8 equals 0.125, that is 0.125, which is 12,5% interest. There you go. And no, grade 11s, you don't need to write all the steps, okay? But I have done it nice and slowly so you can see what I did and so that you don't, can see that how to be careful of making careless errors, okay? So please be careful of doing this. Um, I worry that a lot of my students do this, they go 2x and they go cancel, cancel, then they go equals naught. That's not. You're effectively dividing by x, so that equals 1. So rather write it like, like this if you think you're going to make that error, okay? If you're confident that you're not going to ever make that error, then that's fine. You can just cancel. Otherwise, divide properly. Right, let's carry on. 
Alfredo bought a washing machine at the beginning of 2010 for 3,300 Rand and he sold it at the end of 2013 for 1,800 Rand. Hmm, not bad. It says, at what rate did the washing machine de depreciate assuming compound depreciation? Okay, so we've got A is equal to P, 1 minus I to the N. It's compound depreciation, so it's this formula with a minus because it's a depreciation. Okay, this time we've got that this started with 3,300, right? We've got the principal is, mm, I'm wrong, darn it. We started, we started with uh, 1,800. <laughs> Sorry, let's try again. We started with 1,000. Oh, I'm, I'm really going to get there. Sorry, guys. Jeez. Um, Sorry. Just irritated. Okay, right. The principal is the amount we start with, which is 3,300. The amount we get out is the amount that Alfredo sold it for, which is 1,800. Okay. The interest rate is what we want and first of all we need to work out the number of years so let's just write it out again we start at the beginning of 2010 he bought at the beginning of 2010 and we go into the end of 2013 so it's 2010 to the end of 2010 is one year to the end of 2011 is two years to the end of 2012 is three years and to the end of 2013 is four years. So it's actually the four years, one, two, three, four, because it's to the end of 2013 from the beginning. You guys have got to be careful of little things like that that are tricks. So N is four years. Okay, so now what we need to do, we're going to go 1,800 is equal to 3,300 1 minus i to the power of 4, okay? So we want to solve for i. So do you agree that the quickest way to do this, the easiest way is we're going to divide both sides by 3,300. We're going to divide this side by 3,300. We're going to divide this side by 3,300. This cancels with this, obviously. That cancels with that. That cancels with that. Okay, so we've got 18 over 33 is equal to 1 minus i to the n. I'm going to divide both the top and bottom by 3, and I'm going to end up with 6 over 11 is equal to 1 minus i to the n. It just makes it nicer for me to look at. So now, I want to carry on with the sum, and I'm going to carry on with it up here, so it's easier for me to do. But the n is what? The n is 4. I don't know why I suddenly started writing n. Okay, so this is 4, and this is 4. So we've got 6 over 11 is equal to 1 minus i to the power of 4, right? But what can we do? Do you agree that we can find the fourth root of this and we can find the fourth root of that? And that will end up giving us just the value of 1 minus i. So let's find the fourth root of 6 over 11. So we're going to go here and then we're going to go shift and press that button and that's the fourth root of a fraction which is 6 over 11 equals and that's 0 0.86 okay so it's 0 0.86 0,86. But 0,86 equals 1 minus i. So therefore we can say 0,86 minus 1 is equal to minus i. So we're going to take our value and we're going to minus 1. And we end up with minus 0.14. So minus 0,14 is equal to minus i. Therefore the interest is going to be 14 percent. Okay, so the compound depreciation is 14 percent. I'm sorry I wrote all funny. Let me just show you the direction in case you guys are confused. I wrote down here. Oh, that didn't help at all. I wrote down here, then I went across, then I went up to here, whoopsie, up to here, and then through. Okay, sorry, I just always lack space, but I also try to write very big, so sorry about that. 
Okay, now let's talk timelines because they love asking questions that we need timelines for. And timelines help us visualize multiple changes, okay? So you could have some extra deposits. Let's say you're saving for something and then somebody, suddenly Aunt um, Maggie from England sends you some pounds, which then you convert into mega amounts of rands and you deposit that into your savings account already to boost to your savings for your car or whatever, okay? We could have a problem where you need to start you withdraw some money, you need more money for your student fees or whatever, so then you withdraw some money before you intended to get it out. There could be changes in interest rate, hopefully better ones, okay? And so we need what is called a timeline and you don't, it's not a requirement to draw a timeline, but I would seriously suggest you guys think about drawing a timeline because when you do, then this question actually becomes very easy, these questions. So for this first one, um, we've actually included a picture of the timeline with a solution just to make it easier. Okay, so it says Wyatt invested 90,000 Rand in the bond market for a total of seven years. Okay, so you've gone from T0 to T7. The interest rate for the first two years, for the first two years is 8.5% uh, Why is it doing that? compounded annually. For the next three years, the interest was increased to 9.75% compounded monthly. During the final two years, the interest rate is compounded quarterly. So it's calculated the total value of investment at the end of the seven years. Okay, so now there are a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to do it the long way first, just so you can see how to do it. And then we'll show you the shortcut. Okay, but I need you to show see the long way so that you can see how we do this. So the first thing we're looking at is the 90,000 Rand. So we're investing 90,000 Rand. And do you agree that this is all compound interest? So we're all going to go A is equal to P. 1 plus i to the power of n. That is the formula we're going to be using for each bit, okay? During the first two years, so it's from year to year, the interest rate was 8.5% compounded annually. So the i is 0, 0,085 and the n is just 2. Okay, happy with that. Then for the next three years, for the next three years, the interest was increased to 9.75%, but it's compounded monthly. So now for the next three years, I is 0, 0, 0.0975 divided by 12. And the number of payments is going to be 3 times 12, which is, I mean, 3 times 4. Monthly, no, I'm right. So it's 36. Finally, finally, in the last two years, the interest rate is compounded quarterly. So it's the same interest rate. It's I is equal to 0, 0, 0,975 over 4. And then N is going to be 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out this bit. Then we're going to work out this bit based on this, and then we're going to work out this bit based on this. Okay, I'm going to show you that method so you actually understand what we're doing when I show you the shortcuts, okay? So the first one is going to be A is equal to P, which is 90,000, times by 1 plus 0, 0,085 to the power of 2. Okay, so let's put that in our calculators. Clear. So we've got 90, 1, 2, 3, bracket, 1 plus 0 0.085, bracket, and it's squared, equals, and that is 105,915.25 cents. 105,915.25 cents. So it's 105,950 and 25 cents. Now what you need to understand is that is the principle for this. That equals the principle for this section because that is the amount of money we're going in with. So therefore A here is going to be P 1 plus, well let me just write down the principle then, eraser. 
So it is 105,950,25 times by 1 plus this bit here, which is 0, 0, 0,0975, all over 12, all to the power of 36. Okay, and that is equal to what? So let's go and do that on our calculator. So we're going to take the 105,950 and 25 cents and we're going to multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.0975, sorry, delete, 95 all over 12 bracket to the power of 36 equals, and now we're at 141,781 and 59 cents. 141,781 and 59 cents, okay, and 59 cents. So that's what we're at at the moment. Now this again, that is the principle for this bit. Okay, it's the principle for this bit. So if we then write this out and we do it over here, A is equal to 141,781, comma 5, 9, there's a reason writing this all down here, comes 1 plus 0, 0, 0, 0.0975 all over 4, all to the power of 8. So let's do that on our calculator. So I'm going to clear this and make it exactly like the rounded numbers, 141. 781.59 multiplied by bracket 1 plus 0 0.0975 all over 4. Um, no, let's delete that. Um, to the power of 8 equals, and that's 171,000. 171,000, oh, let me look at the rest of the number, 906 and 23 cents, 906 and 23 cents. So that is the total amount that you should get, why it should get out at the end of the seven years, 171,906 and 23 rand. Okay, fair enough. But now there's a shortcut, okay, and I want to show you the shortcut. So Basically, what I'm saying to you is that, what I'm going to be saying to you is that this bit here is all multiplied. Do you agree that this is equal to this? Okay. So instead of writing this bit, 105,950 and 25 cents, I could actually write 90,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0. Make it look pretty. Naught comma naught eight five squared multiplied by one plus naught comma naught nine seven five over twelve to the power of thirty six. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if you look at this purple section, do you agree that this bit here, the 105,915.25 cents, is exactly the same as this? It's the same thing. So instead of writing 105,915.25 cents, I could write 90,000 times by 1, to 1 plus 0 0.085 squared. So that's what I've done. This year is the same as 105,915.25 cents. But that then comes to 141,781 and 59 cents. So do you agree that 141,781 and 59 cents is equal to this, okay, sorry, is equal to this multiplied by this. This multiplied by this. Okay, that's 141,000. So to get the final answer, what do we do? We take that all that, and then we multiply by our last bit, which is 1 plus 0, 0, 0.0975 all over 4 to the power of 8. Okay, and now I would like you to try that for homework. I've got a message. I would like you to try that for homework. Um, And when um, 
I will answer the question that I've just been sent um, a, a few minutes ago in a second. Um, but if you um, could try that for homework and then I will show you how to do it the next time I see you guys, have, which is on Thursday. Have a great day. Okay, now I can't.